So the pressure of a gas depends in part on its volume. If you take the gas and you put it into a larger container, uh, the pressure is going to change. So what we find out is that if the temperature and the amount of gas are constant, then the pressure of the gas sample increases if the volume decreases and decreases if the volume increases. There's going to be a lot of increasing and decreasing when we talk about gases. I got the pictures, yeah, here we go. So let's think about a bicycle pump. So a bicycle pump uh, contains a cylinder, much like some of these pictures I've been showing you with the movable piston, right? And so it's got this piston that can move. There's a valve in here that allows air to come in but not go out. And then over here, where you would attach it to your tire, that allows air to go out but not come in. So when you lift up on the plunger, you're increasing the volume of the container that the air, the gas, is in. That causes the pressure to go down. When the pressure goes down, that's like sucking up a straw that causes air to flow in this one-way valve. Now the air is trapped in there, and when we push the plunger down, we're decreasing the volume, we increase the pressure. And that allows us to push air into a tire that already has some air pressure into it. So when you increase the volume, the pressure goes down. When you decrease the volume, the pressure goes up. Think about, like, a, we're going to talk a lot about balloons. We're not going to actually blow up any balloons today like we did yesterday, but we'll think about balloons. Take a balloon and you, and you make it smaller by squeezing on it from the outside. That's like, you know, putting pressure on it. That's increasing the pressure by compressing it into a smaller volume. So smaller volume, high pressure, larger volume, lower pressure. The relationships between the different gas properties, we've got amount of gas, we've got volume, we've got temperature, and we've got pressure. There's four different properties there. They are described by what are called gas laws. Remember, a law says what happens. It doesn't explain why. So Robert Boyle discovered the relationship between volume and pressure. Um, this is back in the 1600s. Okay. So most of these gas experiments were done um, when technology was non-existent. There was no electricity. We didn't know what atoms were. But guys were interested, people were interested in nature, in the universe, and, and the properties of stuff. And so they did experiments. They messed around with things. So he played around with the pressure and volume of gases. So this is, um, this is one way to express Boyle's law. The volume is proportional to 1 over the pressure. That's an inverse relationship. If one goes up, the other goes down. The other way to think of it or express it is this way, and this is what um, we need to be familiar with. P1, V1 equals P2, V2. So this is called Boyle's Law. I think it's good to talk about the scientists and how some of this stuff came about. I'm not going to test you on names or dates. I'm not going to ask you what is Boyle's Law? I want you to know what Boyle's Law is, just P1V1 equals P2V2 and how to use it, but I'm not going to ask you to identify the scientist, okay? Because that's history, which is interesting, but this isn't a history class. So these are the sorts of experiments he did. This is a J-shaped tube, a J-tube, and it's closed at one end and it's open at the other end. So there's a gas in here, and then there's some mercury. And the mercury is a liquid, and it keeps the gas from leaving the tube. And you can determine the difference in pressure between this gas in here and the outside atmospheric pressure by looking at the difference in the column of, of mercury. This side is higher. If both of these um, sides were open to the atmosphere, what would happen to a liquid in that tube? It would go to the bottom, it'd be level, right? It'd be the same on both sides. 
why is this side lower? Something must be pushing it down, right? Pushing this side down, pushing that side up. The pressure of this gas is pushing it down. So looking at this difference in height, which is just measured with a ruler. This is low tech, right? This is a bent piece of glass tubing, some mercury, and a ruler. 1600s, right? Pretty cool that he could figure this out. You measure this with a ruler, you can tell the difference in the gas pressure. It doesn't give you the absolute pressure. It gives you the difference between what's in the atmosphere and what's inside. But the atmospheric pressure is fairly constant, and so it was good enough. If you put more mercury on this, you just pour more mercury into the tube. Now, gravity is pushing this down. It's going to push this up. So we're going to get this increase in difference here. So we're, we're squeezing this gas volume smaller. And that's a larger pressure. So we see a, a larger difference in the height. Does that make sense? I don't think I said that very well at all. When you put more pressure by adding mercury on here, you, we're squeezing the gas into a smaller volume. That volume could be measured. So the height is proportional to the um, difference in gas pressure, and you can measure the volume. We can see that this volume is smaller. So this is the sort of relationship he saw. Um, a volume, you know, 450 or 425 um, liters, at a very low pressure, millimeters of mercury. And as the pressure increases, the volume gets smaller and smaller. The more mercury you put into that tube, the more pressure there is and the smaller the gas volume gets. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Right. I think I understand your question. Um, yes, there's pressure here from the atmosphere, and there's pressure there. When we add more mercury here, um, it, it, it's trying to equalize. And it, it won't fill this up because there's a gas in there taking up space. But we're, we're pushing that gas into a smaller and smaller space. And so we're increasing the pressure of it. And so we see that the difference in these column heights increases. Let, let me draw a different one. Because that one's a little bit extreme. Oops. So we were here. If I add if I add more mercury, maybe just up to here, that's gonna cause this mercury to want to push over here. And so this is this side's gonna go up. It's not going to go up an equal amount, though, because this gas increases its pressure as it gets squished. And so the difference in these heights now is a little bit bigger than it was before. Does that make sense? Did that answer your question? Yeah. Kind of. Any other questions? So you can make a graph like this. Uh, scientists don't like curved graphs like that because it's, it's nicer if you can get a straight line because then you can do linear regression, you can get an equation of the line, and everything's a lot easier to do. So this is um, some data I made up. Um, volume versus pressure, just like on the previous slide, we get this curve. If instead of graphing volume versus pressure, we graph volume versus one divided by the pressure, then we get this really nice straight line. 
And that's the inverse relationship. So you can, you can go through the math um, to figure out how they come up with P1V1 equals P2V2, but most Chem 3A students aren't that interested in that. So if you want to see that, I'd be happy to show you, but I'm not going to use lecture time. So Boyle's law says if you increase the pressure, you decrease the volume, and vice versa. Kinetic molecular theory explains why this happens. So here we have um, a cylinder with a movable lid, and we've got a, a weight on here pressing down. We've got a little gauge over here that's measuring the pressure. The pressure here is one atmosphere. The same as outside. This top is not falling down because there's air in here, right? So think of like a, an air mattress, right? Or a pool float, you know, raft. You can lay on it. Why doesn't it just go flat? There's nothing in there, right? Oh, there's air in there. The air occupies space, right? It occupies volume. And so the air inside is holding up this lid. If we put a heavier weight on that so that the volume gets cut in half, here this is one liter, and this now we've, we've cut the volume in half. We see the pressure gauge, the pressure doubles. So the pressure goes up by a factor of two, the volume goes down by a factor of two. Why is the pressure higher? Well, we have the same number of gas particles. They're moving at the same speed, but now because they're in a smaller container, they're going to collide with the walls more frequently, and that causes the increase in pressure. Any questions? So how do we use Boyle's Law? So there's going to be a bunch of word problems. Um, I'm going to show you how to deal with them. First, again, read the whole question. The cylinder equipped with a movable piston has an applied pressure of 3.0 atmospheres and a volume of 5.0 liters. What is the volume of the cylinder if the pressure is decreased to 2.0 atmospheres? So again, the numbers are what is important. So we've got this number, and this number, and this number. What we have with Boyle's law and a couple of the other laws is we've got things changing. There's a beginning pressure and an ending pressure, a beginning volume and an ending volume. So I think the best approach is to make a table and put the numbers into a table. How big should I make that? So we're going to have condition one and condition two. It doesn't matter if it's the initial or the final. Sometimes it matters. It doesn't matter for gas laws. So go back through the problem, find the first number. 3.0 atmospheres. Darn it. 3.0 atmospheres. Okay, so I'm going to write that. I came across it first. I'm going to write this in the first row, 3.0 atmospheres. It says pressure, pressure of 3.0 atmospheres. So I know that's a pressure. I'm going to label this column pressure. It doesn't always say the word pressure. ATM is a unit of pressure. You should recognize that. So this and a volume of 5 liters. Those two go together. Do you see that? Three atmospheres and 5 liters. So I'm going to put the 5.0 liters on the same row as the three atmospheres because they go together. And that's a volume, so I'm going to label that column V. I move along. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What is the volume if the pressure is decreased to? So here's something regarding a change. And then this 2.0 atmospheres, that's a pressure. So I'm going to put that in the same column with my other pressure. You should end up with numbers 
in three boxes and a blank box. So I'm going to call this, because it's in column V and row 2, I'm going to call that V2. And that's what we're looking for. Any questions? So we know that this problem is going to use Boyle's Law because it says so right up there. So P1, V1 equals P2, V2. I am solving for V2. And I confirm that here. What is the volume? I'm supposed to be looking for a volume. I need to take this chemical equation. No, it's not a chemical equation. It's a math equation. I need to take that equation and rearrange it to solve it for what I'm looking for, V2. Okay. So here's V2. I need to move P2 to the other side. Some of you can just do this in your head. That's awesome. Many of you can't. That's okay. We'll get, we'll get through this. Bless you. So if I want to keep V2 here and I want to get rid of P2, I'm going to divide by P2. Because P2 divided by P2 is 1. They cancel out. If I do it to one side, I have to do it to the other side to keep things equal. So I divide by P2 on this side. And there I've rearranged my equation. I'm going to rewrite it. So V2 is equal to P1 times V1 divided by P2. Copy that down carefully because there's so many opportunities to switch things around. Now, I've got my equation and I've got all my numbers labeled over here. This is P1, that's P2, this is V1, and I'm solving for V2. So I just need to plug these in. So P1 is 3.0 atmospheres. Volume 1 is 5.0 liters divided by pressure 2. Write the units because the units will alert you if, if things went crazy or maybe there's a problem with the units. So I see that atmospheres are going to cancel atmospheres. I'm left with a unit of liters, which is a unit of volume, so that's a good sign. Volume 2 equals, we've got 3 times 5 divided by 2, should be 7.5. Uh, Calculator says 7.5, the unit is liters. For significant figures, all of these have two sig figs, this should have two sig figs, and it does. Then ask yourself, does it make sense? So the pressure went down. We lowered the pressure. That means that the volume should increase, go the opposite. Okay? Is this bigger than the initial? It is. So we probably did it correctly. Any questions? Let's do another example. Let's talk about this first, though. Um, these gas laws have direct application to some things like scuba diving. Um, so every 10 meters of depth that you go underwater, you, in, you experience an increase of about one atmosphere of pressure. So if you're 10 meters underwater, the pressure is doubled from what it is at atmospheric pressure. In order to breathe, you need to be able to expand your lungs against the pressure, and then the pressure of the air comes in. When you expand your lungs, expanding the volume decreases the pressure of your lungs, and that sucks air in. When you compress your lungs and breathe out, you squeeze the air, increasing the pressure, pushing it out. And so that's what you're doing right now. Everybody's breathing, right? Keep doing that. It's good. So you come down here under the water, and now you've got, he's down at 20 meters, so he's an increase of two atmospheres, a total of three atmospheres of pressure. So the pressure in his lungs is three atmospheres. He's, he's breathing pressurized gas um, air. So if he holds his breath and ascends quickly, 
the pressure in his lungs is three atmospheres, which down here when the outside pressure is three atmospheres is fine. But up here where the outside pressure is one atmosphere and the inside pressure is three atmospheres, your lungs are going to expand and at the very least it, it would be very, very painful. So you definitely, you know, if you're scuba diving, you need to be breathing, inhaling, exhaling while you're ascending to avoid your lungs exploding. That'd be ugly. Okay, this is a fun one. This is what I would consider a challenging Chem 3A question. A snorkeler takes a syringe filled with 16 milliliters of air from the surface where the pressure is one atmosphere to an unknown depth. The volume of the air in the syringe at this depth is 7.5 milliliters. What is the pressure at this depth? If the pressure increases by an additional one atmosphere for every 10 meters of depth, how deep is the snorkeler? Well, let's just focus on the first question. What is the pressure at this depth? Sometimes with questions like this, we need to draw a picture. So I'm going to draw you an ugly picture. So here's the surface of the water. And up on the surface, we have a syringe. Um, so there's the plunger. That's a really ugly syringe, whatever. Um, 16 milliliters. Actually, I realize it. Make it like this. 16 milliliters of air in there. And then we're going to take it down under the water. And what's going to happen to that air? It's going to be compressed, right? So it's going to get smaller. And um, we're given that 7.5 milliliters. So you take the syringe under the water. That, that plunger can move. And so the water pressure on that plunger causes the air to compress and become smaller. So we need to make a table and organize our numbers here. Let's read through this. Um, 16 milliliters of air, OK? Is that a pressure or a volume? It's a volume. We'll call this column 1 and column 2. 16 milliliters of air from the surface where the pressure is 1 atmosphere. So the pressure is 1 atmosphere. And that's, that's this up here. One atmosphere. And we bring it down under the water. Don't know how deep. The volume now is 7.5 milliliters. We don't know what the pressure is. What is the pressure at this depth? Well, look, we've got a table with three values in it and one blank we can solve for the blank thing. We're going to call this P2. So we rearrange the equation again. So P1 V1 equals P2 V2. That's Boyle's law. This time I want P2 by itself. So I'm going to divide by V2. V2 over V2 cancels out. I have to do the same thing to both sides. Um, so here's my equation. P2 equals P1 V1 divided by, oops, V2. Any questions? I have my numbers all organized. I'm going to put them into the equation with their units. Pressure 1 is 1 atmosphere. Volume 1 is 16 milliliters. Divided by volume 2, 7.5 milliliters. So I've got 16 times 1 divided by 7.5. So 
So pressure 2 equals 2.13333 atmospheres. All my numbers have two significant figures, so this should have two, 2.1 atmospheres. That's the answer to the first question. Any questions about that? That part isn't too bad. It's, it's adding on the next part that makes it a little more challenging. They're saying, well, if the pressure increases an additional one atmosphere for every 10 meters of depth, how deep is the snorkeler? We need to convert. Yeah. But it's, it's not a super straightforward conversion. So we have an increase of one atmosphere per 10 meters of depth. But that's not the absolute pressure. That's the increase in the pressure. What was the increase in pressure? This is the pressure down here. So down here, this is 2.1 atmospheres. How much did it increase? 1.1 atmospheres, right? The change in pressure was 2.1 minus 1.0, or 1.1 atmospheres. So we can use this on the change to find out the depth. 1.1 atmospheres times 10 meters for every one atmosphere. That, that's a conversion factor that's given in the problem. And so this tells us that the depth is 11 meters. You need to be able to do the first part of the problem. You don't have to be able to do the last part. Well, you could make your own depth measurement thing just with a syringe full of air, if you could do the calculations. Look at the volume of the air at the surface, take it down, and look at the volume down at the depth you're interested in, and do a calculation like this, and you can find out how deep it is. Of course, you could also use like a ruler or something, a yardstick, but that would be more fun. Any questions?